I've mentioned more than once over the months that I adore a good clone-centric tale from our favourite galaxy far, far away, and there are many stories involving our crew of doppelgangers that I'm currently reading through to regale you with at the end, but as I was in the midst of researching various prequel-era-based stories to cover, as that's generally my area of expertise, I stumbled across this gem, a graphic novel composed of five issues that were released during the age of TikTok streaming and masks. These are dark times, there is no denying. Written by Michael Moresi and composed of various talented artists and inkers including the likes of Derek Charm, Ariana Fruin and Valentina Tadeo. This series of short stories is set during the early months of the Clone War before the start point of the TV series with Anakin's scrap in the skies against Admiral Trench. Each issue brilliantly underlines the identity and purpose of a Jedi with Captain Rex, Commander Cody and Commander Wolf all providing examples of how their respective generals operate and tend to their troops whilst informing us of their exploits and heroisms and offering some exhilarating battle sequences against fan favourite villains. Good times. If you've not heard of these comics or the novel that they went on to form, I'd highly recommend that you go out of your way to check them out. But for the purposes of these reviews, I'm going to cover each issue independently for the next few weeks and draw on the deeper meanings and little nods that I can spot between them. Issue 1 starts with a beautiful combination of commanders Cody and Wolf alongside Captain Rex as they and their men battle it out on the planet of Hisin. Whilst Masters Plo, Annie and Obi are in search of Count Dooku and Asajj Ventress, who seek to dissolve the planet's government to allow for a hostile takeover. As tensions rise for our troops who are left to fend off the waves of droids as their Jedis head off to investigate, they show us here how fresh their respective commands are to them, and that this is possibly the first time that all these men are working together, as Cody is the first to express his concerns in trusting General Skywalker's methods in war. No, no. He's got a point. Now Rex doesn't dismiss these statements, but assures Cody of his ability to succeed by taking us back to their early days on the planet of Benglor, where the boys in blue investigate a possible location to set a base, but are thrown off by remnants of battle droids that lead to a swampland inhabited by a giant-like toad creature that makes its mark by devouring a trooper named Bello. That's not Anakin goes to great lengths to ensure his men are protected and saves Hardcase from becoming its next meal. Rex's time here concludes with him taking the initiative to come back for Anakin against orders and proves his value as a human being to our young Jedi and the loyalty that creates the bond between the two. I salute you, sir. At the end of this escapade, Anakin confesses that he sees more to the clones than just genetic replications, but living, breathing men that he feels the losses of, which comforts Rex who felt like nothing more than a tool till that moment. As we return to the present day, Plo Koon tries to contact the men for their support as we close on Boost asking where Commander Wolf is and the visual of Anakin engaging Dooku in the background. My powers have doubled since the last time we met Count. Good. Twice the pride. So, exciting stuff for the first issue, eh? This is honestly a sincere and heartwarming way to bring us back to this era of Star Wars at the time, as the release of this issue specifically came just weeks after the conclusion of the Clone Wars series, so fans were still reeling from witnessing the boys in blue attack both Ahsoka and Rex on the night of Order 66. <laughs> and bear witness to Darth Vader taking his first steps into this gorgeous animation style. Oh, 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 oh my god, he's in his shadow! Look at his shadow! Oh, oh. So, to be reunited with two-thirds of our trio from the animated Juggernaut must have been a joy for present-day readers, as it certainly was for me. I always have a fear in the pit of my stomach when anything says it's going back before the events of Christophsis and after episode 2, as it's fertile ground for something new to grow that could either offer something infallible or insulting. Thankfully here though, it was the former. This was everything that you could want from a Clone Wars based story. It features recognisable names, visually stunning backdrops, a reminiscent art style, quippy humour, weighted conversations and most importantly, context. Fan fucking dabby dozy. This wasn't just a throwaway adventure, it was a soulful moment immortalised on a page where Anakin and Rex became friends, where we got to see their trust blossom and their loyalty established, which becomes the backbone of the show and extends to Ahsoka when she comes on the scene as well. The brilliance here is the subtlety to how long they've been serving and it's explained through their conversations and expressions. Rex has only recently received his J-Guys and Anakin's still rather rigid in his leadership style and was uncertain initially of what his instructions were as this wasn't what 
the Jedi were trained for. But it was only when Rex chose to ignore a command while still following instructions that Anakin realised he could rely on Rex to do what was right as much as what was necessary. They were suddenly reflections of each other. A point to Rex that we're reminded of during the Battle of Umbara when Anakin says that Dogma reminds him of Rex in his early days and Rex doesn't recognise that part of him anymore. Then, when Rex continually defies General Krell to preserve the integrity of the 501st and what Anakin's built them up as. This is one of those rare instances where a comic story carries substance as well as some fun appearances, which not so subtly segues my ass into the little nods and talking points from this issue. The first of which being the return of Hardcase, a clone who, if you're unaware, was seen a couple of times throughout the animated show, primarily in the hunt for Grievous in Season 2 and the Umbara arc in Season 4. Hardcase is a more boisterous trooper who mentions during his infiltration of an Umbaran base with Fives that his growth jar had a leak which led him to become more hyperactive and devoid of logic and strategy, meaning he jumps straight to a blaster to get him out of a jam whereas say Cody relies on hand-to-hand -hand combat for survival in desperate times. I didn't call you idiots. I call you stupid idiots. His eccentric nature made him a more beloved character to fans, and any time that you can work his character back into the lore, I'll take it. Then lastly, Commander Wolf and the Wolf Pack's armour colours. This is wildly different to what we understand the group to have in animation, but we do start the show with Sinker and Boost donning this phase of their battalion's colours, but beyond this point, including the comics, the 104 switches completely and remains grey in correlation with the colours of an actual wolf. Despite how recognisable the coloration is, I personally wish they would have stuck with what we have here, as it's visually more striking, but after having the 104 the way we have for so long, I'm left feeling conflicted as this is a more recognisable variation to them. Overall, for an introduction to these Battle Tales adventures, this was solid. There's a part of me that believes you could spin these sort of concepts off into their own shows, like Tales of the Jedi. Shorter encounters that offer refined, compelling and exciting adventures with our characters as Tales of the Jedi proof they can do. Just imagine what these could have looked like in the beautiful animation style, but I doubt with how quickly Disney's descending into the fiery flames of hell that they'll write more checks for genuine genius-like concepts of this magnitude. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Make sure you come back next week to hear my thoughts on part two of this story, and until next time everybody, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to more. Take care, and may the force be with you.